It's a him, Mario! A man who really needs no introduction. He's easily the most recognizable video game character in the world. I mean, the name of this channel is 1UP Binge, so clearly the impact that Mario has made is still being felt after all these years. Whether due to his heroism, his practice as a doctor, or even throwing a really sweet party, everyone in this universe knows who Mario is and has likely interacted with him on a few occasions. His fame has allowed him to develop relationships with many other characters, with some relationships being healthier than others. Today we're taking a look at who gets along with Mario best and which characters cause him the most stress. Hey guys, I'm Brad with 1UP Binge, and this is Mario's Relationships – Healthy to Toxic. A couple rules. As usual, we're not going to be considering sources outside of the game, such as movies, television shows, or comics. That means Mario's relationship with Big Bertha from the 1993 film will sadly not be found here. And second, Mario has interacted with a lot of characters, so we have to narrow it down to the heavy hitters. But let us know in the comments if you'd like to know about Paper Mario's relationships in a separate video. Alright, let's start with the most healthiest relationship and work our way down to his most toxic. These are the healthy relationships. The gold medal for Mario's healthiest relationship goes to the bond he has with his brother, Luigi. They don't call them the Super Mario Brothers for nothing, as Mario and Luigi's relationship is one of the most iconic in all of gaming. Mario and Luigi's love and appreciation has not wavered since their first appearance. Mario knows he can always rely on his taller sibling for a helping hand, even if Luigi will cower in fear every step of the way. Many seem to be under the impression that Luigi is jealous of Mario overshadowing him, but considering how reluctant Luigi is to put himself in danger, we believe he doesn't mind Mario taking the spotlight more often than not. Mario and Luigi rarely fight, unless it's in a competitive situation like kart racing or golf, so we aren't going to let behind-the-scenes speculations of jealousy prevent this relationship from achieving the gold medal. Mario's relationship with Princess Peach earns the silver medal. Mario has been around many ladies, many of which we'll get to a little later. However, none of the other ladies even come close to Princess Peach in terms of who Mario has spent the most time fighting for. Whether he has to traverse through the Mushroom Kingdom, Dinosaur Land, Isle Delfino, or even outer space, Mario will go to great lengths to ensure Peach's safety. A girl loves a guy who can commit, and Peach knows she can rely on Mario to get the job done. It's to the point where we're not even sure if Peach feels any genuine fear from being captured by Bowser at this point. She's proven through several games, such as Super Mario 3D World, that she She's equally as capable as Mario or Luigi when it comes to platforming, if not more so with her ability to float. With that in mind, why does she stay in Bowser's captivity other than she simply likes being rescued by Mario? You could argue this relationship has some codependency issues, which is why it doesn't gain the gold medal. But Mario and Peach certainly have an appreciation for each other, which isn't matched by many in the Mushroom Kingdom. The bronze medal relationship goes to the Flash Liquidizer Ultra Dousing Device, better known as Flash. In Super Mario Sunshine, it seemed that everyone Mario met on Isle Delfino was out to get him. Despite being an invention, Flood is one of the only characters from the beginning of the game who sees and fully understands Mario's heroism, while still feeling pity regarding the Isle Delfino residence's situation. Gotta admit, that's one empathetic water nozzle. Even though the game is called Super Mario Sunshine, it could be argued that Flood is the real star. The insane capabilities of this ingenious invention allow Mario to reach new heights with this platforming. On top of cleaning up all of Isle Delfino from Shadow Mario's toxic goop. Flood and Mario make for an excellent team, and Mario shows his appreciation for Flood on numerous occasions. This includes saving him from Shadow Mario in Pianta Village and having Flood fixed after being damaged during the final fight. Even if Flood hasn't accompanied Mario in any other adventures, the bond this plumber and water pack share and their one pairing is enough to land them the bronze medal on our countdown. The next spot goes to his relationship with Cappy. In Super Mario Odyssey, Cappy serves a similar function to Flood by sticking close to Mario through the entire journey. However, instead of using water at his disposal, Cappy helps Mario through the power of possession. Whether it's Goomba, a bullet bill, or a big freaking dinosaur, Cappy makes sure Mario takes control of whatever he needs in order to find all the power moons. Cappy's little sister, Tiara, has also been captured by Bowser so he can identify with Mario's quest for saving Peach. Despite being a hat, Cappy more than shows he's as much of a hero as Mario is. They demonstrate fantastic fantastic teamwork and have great appreciation for each other's help. Even if Mario's journey with Flood has more emotional moments, which allow us to rank it up
it a little higher, Cappy and Mario make for an amazing duo. The next relationship is his relationship with Yoshi. Ever since he was an infant, Mario has been relying on Yoshi to get him through tough situations. Not only did Yoshi reunite baby Mario with baby Luigi several times, but the multicolored dinosaurs never complained once about baby Mario's grating crying. As Mario grew up, his relationship with Yoshi has stayed strong, as they still often team up on many adventures, whether they take place in the Mushroom Kingdom, a faraway island, or in another galaxy. While Mario and Yoshi certainly have a commendable connection, there are some darker aspects of this relationship which prevent us from ranking this relationship higher. This includes jumping off of Yoshi to save himself from pits in Super Mario World. Beyond that though, Mario and Yoshi certainly make for one of the most iconic duos in all of gaming, and for good reason. Next is his relationship with Pauline. Back when Mario was Jumpman, Cranky Kong was Donkey Kong, and Pauline was Lady, Mario and Pauline were in a romantic relationship. However, somewhere after the events of the Donkey Kong arcade game and Super Mario Brothers on NES, Pauline and Mario apparently went their separate ways for a while. This was until Donkey Kong once again captured Pauline and the Donkey Kong Game Boy game and the Mario vs. Donkey Kong series. When it's revealed that Pauline is actually the mayor of New Donk City in Super Mario Odyssey, Mario even opts to help her save the city from the damage which Bowser has been causing. This shows that, despite no longer being romantically involved, Mario still cares about Pauline's safety, which is very respectable. Who says you can't have a good relationship with your ex? Now we have his relationship with Toadsworth. If there's one character who's even more concerned about the well-being of Princess Peach than Mario is, it's Toadsworth. Debuting in Super Mario Sunshine, Toadsworth is Peach's steward ever since the princess was a child and has kept a close eye on her ever since. While his intentions are pure, Toadsworth isn't the most physically capable of protecting Peach from Bowser, which is why he calls Mario. Considering Mario and Toadsworth put Peach's safety as their highest priority, it makes sense that they appreciate each other. Even if Toadsworth does rely on Mario a little too much, they still have an overall healthy relationship. Next is his relationship with Princess Rosalina. One of the few females in the series, which is yet to be saved by Mario, Rosalina instead helps Mario save Peach in Super Mario Galaxy. When Bowser steals the Power Star she uses to pilot her spaceship, from the very beginning, Rosalina is clearly aware that Mario is a hero, and she puts a lot of faith in his capabilities. It could be argued that Rosalina could be more proactive in helping Mario collect the Power Stars, considering she is the protector of the cosmos. However, she makes up for this by joining Mario's team later in Super Mario 3D World, which she had no obligation to do. Rosalina has reappeared often in the Mario series as of late to participate in parties, kart racing, and sports, so it's clear that she and Mario have developed a close friendship in recent recent years. Next is Toadette. The concept of female toads was originally introduced in Paper Mario on the N64, but it wasn't until Mario Kart Double Dash until we got a definitive recurring character out of the female toad species. Ever since that game, Toadette has become a very prominent character within the Mario universe, even appearing as a deuteragonist of Captain Toad, Treasure Tracker. Toadette has a lot of respect and admiration for Mario, and will help him on his adventures in certain situations, such as when she teaches Mario new abilities in Paper Mario. Mario the Thousand Year Door. It's obvious Mario appreciates Toadette and vice versa, making for a very healthy relationship. Next is another longtime acquaintance, Toad. The most recognizable resident of the Mushroom Kingdom, Toad is actually notable for being the first character to say a full sentence to Mario back in Super Mario Brothers. While his iconic, thank you Mario, but the princess is in another castle line, was enough to send many players into a rage, it didn't seem to deter Mario who saved Toads from six other castles before finally getting to Peach. The Toads have always seen Mario as a hero since then, but much like Peach and Toadsworth, they are docked some points for relying on him a little too much. On top of that, Toad could be more helpful helpful than he is, such as when he gets Mario or Luigi to choose a single item from one of his mushroom houses. Why not give them all the items, Toad? They're trying to save your kingdom for crying out loud. Still, Toad and Mario have an overall healthy relationship, despite not giving him all the items. The final healthy relationship is his relationship with Princess Daisy. While Mario has rescued Peach and Pauline from danger many times, he's only needed to save Daisy from captivity in one instance, back in Super Mario Land. In this game, Mario traveled to the kingdom of Sarasa Land to save Daisy from the clutches of a purple alien named Tatanga. Since then, Daisy has not appeared in any main Mario 
Mario Adventures, but has been present in the spin-off series, joining Mario on the golf course, racetrack, and many other places. While Daisy certainly shows a great appreciation for Mario, she seems to be much more interested in Luigi, often pairing with him in many of the spin-offs. Even so, Mario and Daisy seem to have a very friendly relationship. Alright, it's time to jump to the darker side. These are Mario's relationships that are more toxic than the goop from Super Mario Sunshine. These are the toxic relationships. Starting off the section, we have his relationship with his original rival, Donkey Kong. This is confusing because technically there are two Donkey Kongs, the current one with the tie that says DK, and the original one that originally became Cranky Kong. Be that as it may, both Kongs are guilty of the same thing, which is capturing Pauline and being thwarted by Mario. Whether he's a plumber, carpenter, or a toy manufacturer like in the Mario vs. Donkey Kong games, Mario makes sure this ape's selfish desires are never fully realized for long. With that said, Mario and Donkey Kong are a lot more friendly on certain occasions, especially in the Mario spin-off series, which almost always sees Donkey Kong appear. Mario and Donkey Kong are at each other's throats a lot, which prevents us from ranking this relationship any higher. But given both have displayed heroism on several occasions, we are positive they would team up again to fight for a noble cause. Now we get to Mario's relationship with his roundest rival, Wario. In Super Mario Land 2, Wario took over Mario's kingdom while Mario was out in Sarasa Land saving Daisy. This entitled Money Hungry Villain's name is a literal pun on the Japanese word Warui, thus translating Wario to mean Bad Mario. With a title like that, it's no surprise Mario and Wario don't get along. However, outside of a few instances, such as the Japanese titles, Wario has mostly left Mario alone in favor of searching for treasure and creating micro games games in his own spin-off series. Mario has even teamed up with Wario on Super Mario 64 DS, where they both work together to take down Bowser, so they're willing to put their differences aside very rarely. Still, the amount of jealousy Wario has over Mario's high-ranking position still makes us classify this as a mostly toxic relationship. Next is his relationship with Bowser Jr. This offspring of Bowser was first introduced in Super Mario Sunshine, where he caused a lot of havoc on Isle Delfino, which he framed Mario for via the use of his magic paint brush. Even though his disguise was eventually unveiled, Bowser Jr. has consistently appeared in subsequent games, where he teams up with his father in an attempt to capture Peach and defeat Mario. Bowser Jr. was clearly molded to have a strong hatred for Mario from his birth, and given the love he has for his father, that hatred has not wavered much over the years. The reason this relationship barely avoids the top three most toxic is that Mario and Bowser Jr. actually have worked together in Bowser's Fury, showing that Bowser Jr. will call on Mario if he needs him. Still, Still, the amount of propaganda Bowser has instilled into his child makes this one toxic relationship. The bronze medal of toxicity goes to his relationship with Bowser. Many villains in the Mario games have come and gone but none have remained as consistent and committed to their cause as Bowser. Ever since the NES, the fire-breathing turtle dragon has been capturing Princess Peach only to be defeated by Mario time and time again. Mario has faced Bowser more times than any other video game hero and villain dynamic in video game history, which definitely gives credence to the toxicity of this relationship. We can't give this relationship the silver or gold because they teamed up a few times, such as in Super Mario RPG or Super Paper Mario. They clearly know how to work together as as a team despite their differences, so there are glimmers of hope to be found. Given the amount of times they faced off, we're still giving them the bronze medal. Mario's relationship with Kamek grabs the silver medal. We talked about earlier how Bowser clearly molded Bowser Jr. to have a strong hatred for Mario as a young infant. However, the cycle of indoctrination goes back further than that, as Kamek was also riling up baby Bowser to hate Mario in the Yoshi's Island games. Kamek is the reason Bowser, as an adult, feels as entitled as he does. On top of shaping Bowser into the force he is today, Kamek is also guilty of separating Mario and Luigi as infants, which is pretty slimy. At least when Bowser fights Mario, they're usually both adults, but the fact Kamek is willing to resort to such tactics makes him more evil than Bowser. Since Kamek and Mario have never really teamed up, unlike Bowser or Bowser Jr., we rank his relationship with Mario as slightly more toxic. The gold medal for Mario's toxic relationship surprisingly goes to his rivalry with King Boo. In the Luigi's Mansion series, King Boo captures Mario on several occasions and imprisons him, often in a painting, to lure Luigi into danger. Now, it may seem odd to rank this as Mario's most toxic relationship, considering King Boo is Luigi's arch nemesis. However, the reason we're giving the gold medal to King Boo is because he was able to do the one thing that all of Mario's other rivals failed to do. He beat Mario. Three times, as a matter of fact. Sure, Mario was 
was later rescued by Luigi, but that doesn't negate the fact that King Boo is the only villain in Mario's history that has been able to triumph over Mario multiple times. Also, King Boo's plan of imprisoning Mario in a painting for all of eternity seems much crueler than anything which Wario, Donkey Kong, Bowser, Bowser Jr., or even Kamek have tried to do. King Boo may be Luigi's biggest foe, but his relationship with Mario is equally as toxic. All right, guys, that's it. Let us know in the comments section if you agree with our ranking and tell us what we should cover next. If you need a one up, make sure to hit that notification bell and binge our other Mario and Nintendo videos. Thanks for watching.